meaning of Humpty Dumpty, the nursery rhyme. This caught my attention because you guys have hear, heard me talk a few times about MKUltra and Humpty Dumpty, and also how Humpty Dumpty, they say, probably actually meant cannon. It was during war. This one's different. Um, I glanced at it, but I didn't read the whole thing. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. But just because we're aware of something doesn't mean we know much about it. Where did this nursery rhyme come from and what does it mean exactly? Who is Humpty Dumpty and why is he sitting on a wall to begin with? Answering these questions is precisely the point of this feature. So, without further ado, let's dive into the meaning behind the song Humpty Dumpty. The main character of this song, or nursery rhyme, is an egg named Humpty Dumpty. The song, which had origins in England, most likely began as a riddle. The first recorded version of the rhyme dates back to 1797, and the song was written in 1870 in James William Eliot's book, National Nursery Rhymes. In the, in the United States, the story was made popular by the Broadway actor George L. Fox in the pantomime musical of the same name, which ran from 1868 to 1869, with a total of nearly 500 performances. In 1871, Humpty Dumpty was referred to in Lewis Carroll's 1871 book, Through the Looking Glass, which was a sequel to Alice in Wonderland. In that book, Humpty Dumpty was described as an egg, and author James Joyce used, man, sorry, I stuttered there, and the author James Joyce used Humpty Dumpty as a metaphor for the fall of man in the novel Finnegan's Wake. Today, the nursery rhyme is delivered as a single quatrain a, or a four-line effort which followed the AABB rhythm scheme. The melody commonly associated with this rhyme was first recorded by composer and nursery rhyme collector James W. Eliot. However, the earliest versions of the rhyme came from 1797 and looks and sounds much different compared to the more commonly known version and meaning today. Those lyrics go, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Four score men and four score more could not make Humpty Dumpty where he was before. Furthermore, in 1810, a different version was recorded with slightly different wording and meaning. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. I'm assuming that's still set, but okay. Three score men and three score more cannot place Humpty Dumpty as he sat before. I'm still looking at how sat. Okay. Later, other versions popped up, though they didn't have as long of a shelf life, if you will, <laughs> as the more commonly known versions today. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, in the I gotta stop smiling because you could totally hear it in my voice. Okay, I gotta work on that. I'm the type of person when I smile, you could hear it, and 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 then I start getting giggly. I'm supposed to be reading this serious here. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, in the 17th century, the term Humpty Dumpty referred to a drink made of brandy boiled with ale. The term also was an 18th century bit of slang for a short and clumsy person. Originally, the nursery rhyme may have been more of a riddle to recite, perhaps in bars as people drank their brandy and ale. The riddle may have had the answer for the question, well, who, excuse me, what might sit on a wall and when it falls, can't be put back together again. Answer, an egg. Now, 
Now though, the answer is baked into the riddle and verse because it is so well known. Others have suggested that Humpty Dumpty is in fact the reference to King Richard III of England who was depicted as a humpback, not a whale you guys, in several places including in Shakespeare's play. Shouldn't it say hunchback, not humpback? Others have suggested Humpty was a reference to the cardinal or even a tortoise. More recently, Humpty was shown more recently, Humpty has shown up more and more in popular culture. The pop band AJR even wrote a song named after the famous egg, using him as a metaphor for keeping secrets. Isn't that something, keeping secrets? That goes with Jewel programming. What, what Jewel went with keeping secrets? Was that a sapphire? I forget, I'd have to look at my notes because I'm not thinking about that. Okay, Humpty Dumpty, I'll come back to that subject and I'll just pick back up reading. Humpty Dumpty remains one of the most famous nursery rhymes ever because it's short, it's fun, and it's concise, largely. I, I said that in a really weird cadence, but whatever. But also... Or maybe more than a metaphor for a, a shattered glass, it's a reference to the fallen kings or monarchs. Once a leader falls, there is no going back. Another theory is that a Humpty Dumpty was a slang term for a cannon. Okay, that's the one I knew of. That was managed to get atop a tower wall and fired down below. Really though, it could mean anything. A cannon, a king, an egg, a vase, a short person, a drink, an idea. Hey, they left off the secret. Could be a secret. In the end, that's the point. Humpty Dumpty can be anything. Even us. Hello. If you ain't rocking with Jody, you ain't rocking. Y'all tell me about Hello. Welcome to the Jody Joe Show, where it's just Jody dropping straight jewels. All right, so I checked to see if I was correct on the Sapphire programming, and I was. Sapphire triggers the altar. So this is one where it will protect secrets, and in order to protect them secrets, they'll sometimes self-harm. Feel free to check out my other video on Humpty Dumpty. I went over this in detail. But this is just at a glance what comes to mind when I think of Alice in Wonderland and Humpty Dumpty. So we have Lewis Carroll. We have the Civil War. We have the cannons that King Charles put out. We have Operation Looking Glass. We have the Mad Hatter, which is Mercury. We have Libra, which just passed in the sign um, of the that we just had recently with the eclipse, because it happened in the sign of Libra. Libra ruled by Venus, the seventh sign of the zodiac. Justice, balance, harmony, and human ability to connect with others. And it has the symbol of the scales. Right? And its glyph represent the rising sun. What else does it have to do with? Judgment of the living and the dead. Okay, so the final judgment. Mm-hmm. 